Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. So in this video, we're gonna address some issues that some people have been having with the DIY incubator kits. Um, basically, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me wanting to know where can I get halogen light bulbs? Where can I get the incandescents? I just can't find them. So I started doing a little bit of research and we've come up with a system that is readily available and it will work to your advantage to switch out to this system. We're also gonna talk about how to get more control over your heat settings for the uh, ink for the um, ink bird and as far as how high and low your temperatures go in the thing we're also or in the incubator we're also going to talk about a real quick interior light mod that you can do um, because we're changing our heating elements so we lost that light we are going to show you a real quick mod that you can install a light and uh, have it working as it was before okay so first let's talk about the heating element um, like I said, the incandescents and the halogens are almost impossible to find anymore. And if they are, if you can't find them, they're a little bit pricey. So what, we've, what I've been doing is testing for about the last two weeks using these ceramic reptile heaters. Um, we're using the mini. You can see that it's very short. Uh, this is a 25 watt incand or not incandescent, but, uh, ceramic reptile heater. I've also got some 50 watts that I tested out too. For the mini, this is the one that I recommend, the 25 watt ceramic heating element. Um, with this thing, with the changes made in the Inkbird and this heating element, it runs about 99.3 degrees consistently, which to me is, is pretty close to perfect. But there is a simple modification that you need to make to the, incub or to the incubator before you use these uh, ceramic bulbs. And that is we need to open up the lower air intake for the forced air chamber. Uh, right now it measures one inch by about four inches wide. We need to make that an inch and a half by four inches wide. So what I did was I just took a, a hacksaw blade and I cut on both sides of the uh, current opening up to up about a half an inch taller than it was before. And then I, I cut across to take that, that piece out. Now the reason we have to do that, we reason we have to open up that heat chamber is because these ceramic heaters run a little bit hotter than your light bulb and they hold heat longer so we need a little bit more air circulation a little bit better airflow to distribute that air throughout the box and keep temperatures uniform throughout so once you've done that once you've cut your uh, chamber open uh, the next thing you need to do is go into your ink bird and make some changes but I do want to say that um, all the incubators kits that we sell from here going forward will already have these modifications done to them so you don't have to do anything um, just pick up your heating elements and install it like I'm going to show you okay the settings inside the inkbird I would have never known that you can have so much more control over the inkbird by using Celsius versus using Fahrenheit um, so what you got to do is you got to go into the inkbird just press and hold the S or the set button until you're in there and the first setting that you want to change you got to go in there to where it says cf and you want to change that from f which is fahrenheit over to c which is celsius once you've done that then you can go back in and we're going to change our temperature which is ts you're going to change that temperature to 37.5 degrees now when you change when you change it from fahrenheit to celsius all your settings that you previously had in the Inkbird have been wiped out. It, it goes back to default. When you go to set, set this uh, temperature, it's going to sh be showing uh, 10 degrees Celsius when you first go into it. You want to change that to 37.5. Um, the next setting we're going to go in is your differential set, and that is DS. And your DS or your differential set needs to be 0 0.3. That is the amount of degrees that the ink bird will allow the temperature to cool off before it turns the heating elements back on. Now, you know when it was in Fahrenheit, you had it set to 99 degrees, but the only option that you had was one degree, so it would turn off at 99, and then once it uh, cooled down to 98 is when the heating elements would come on. So now it's, it's coming on seven-tenths of a degree earlier than it would had you stuck with the, the Fahrenheit settings. 
Uh, the only other setting in here, and you don't have to use it unless uh, you know for sure that you have an, an issue with your um, with your thermometers not matching what the Inkbird's saying. Uh, my thermometers, I, I'm using ThermPros, and they're both pretty accurate uh, because I've tested them against glass thermometers. I've used them in you know my uh, hatching time incubator. So I know they're pretty accurate, but what I had to do is I had to go in here and under calibration, which is CA, I had to change that to minus 0 0.5. So minus a half a degree because the ink bird was actually a half a degree different than what my thermometers are reading. Now they're, they're matching up almost perfect. I got 99 on the thermometers. I got 37.0 on the incubator. So it's spot on. Um, Changing over to Celsius, guys, is going to give you 100% more control over your temperature in the box. So that is, it, it's recommended. If, you know, I mean, if you want to stick with Fahrenheit, I think you're going to find that the temperatures drop a little bit too low and actually climb a little bit higher than, than what's wanted. Um, so I would recommend switching over to Celsius. I don't know the conversion rate. I actually, I actually had to go online and look up a uh, um, Fahrenheit to Celsius converter and then type in my temperature so I knew what the, the settings were on the uh, ink bird. Okay, so that takes care of the heating elements. Uh, the next mod is um, the interior light mod. Now, like I said, when we went from the incandescent bulbs or the halogens to these little ceramic heating elements, we lost our light in the incubator. Well, I like having a light in the incubator. So what I did was I just took a hole saw and I cut another hole in the top of the incubator about four inches on center to the right or left of my current heating element. And then I wired them to the like black to black and white to white. I wired them right into the heating element um, supply lines. So now every time the incubator turns on or the ink bird turns the heat on, my light also comes on like before. That way I just at a glance, I can see that, yeah, the lights are on. Um, it's also nice to be able to look in there, you know, and see if the chicks are starting to hatch yet or um, egg, you know, your turners are working, stuff like that. So, um, like I said, guys, I haven't tested the larger box, the 240 egg incubator. I am pretty sure because of the size of the larger box, the, the, the more volume, you're going to need a little bit more than this 25 watt heating element, which is why I'm recommending the 50 watt elements for the bigger cabinet and the 25 watt or the smaller for the, the mini. Um, you may find that in the larger cabinet, you need to use a 50 and a 25 um, or both 50s. But like I say, with, with having the control that we have now using Celsius, I think that two 50s in the larger box and then the single 25 in the small box um, should work just fine for you. So guys, if you have any questions on anything that I've covered today, um, feel free to reach out either, you know, comment in the section, comment section down below or, you know, shoot me an email, terry at caternixcorner.com. Uh, I'm pretty good about answering emails and whatnot. Or if you want to call, if you want to talk with me, uh, my phone number is on the gulfcoastquail.com website. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you out. If I don't answer the phone, leave a message and I will get back with you. So guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope this helps. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out. You can get notified of any new and upcoming videos. So guys, uh, take care and thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.